hey, it's Joe Lyons from the Automator, and I was talking to a friend the other day, and she said, Joe, you know, I'm having problems trying to use this class in here, and I would just love you if you would solve this for me. So um, here she is loving me uh, anyway. But um, so I was talking with Maestrith later that day, and um, I, I know he uses, uh, he creates classes a lot. I don't technically, I don't, I'll use a class, but I don't create classes yet. I'm just not that advanced yet, and I don't have a need for it. Um, however, uh, in the call with Maestrieth, um, I, you know, explained the situation with him and I asked him to kind of help walk through how, what he does. And what he does is he creates a function. And then in that same function, he puts his class definition, uh, because with AutoHotKey, you can have your file in like three places, right? There's the, uh, where AutoHotKey is installed and the LIB folder there and your, my documents folder, there's like an AutoHotKey LIB folder there. And then the local, you know, where your script is running an LIB folder there. If you put your function with the specific name in any of those places, it'll automatically get included. Now with the class that doesn't happen. Um, and the worst part is it doesn't even error out. So this is a discussion. Again, it wasn't a planned conversation where Mace Ruth and I were saying, hey, let's record this video that I'm going to share with everybody. Um, he was just kind of educating me on some stuff. And it's a bit, you know, long and kind of we go a little, you know, back and forth sideways around here. But um, it's some really good uh, learnings on how to work with classes, how to work with functions, how to kind of take care of this situation. Um, oh, oh so also, also, we really get into um, variable scope in global variables and super global variables. There was actually a couple things I, I learned in this about super global variables and how, how you can also use global variables and just depending on, you know, what you're doing. And also we touched on uh, the, the length of variable names and if you want to reuse them or not. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, make sure you comment, you know, if there's other questions you have about this, put them in the comments, right? Let me know what you're uh, wondering about. Cheers. Should you don't, you can put it in your like library folder, right? Right, that, right, 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 now, right. What I, what I didn't, cause I just don't understand how to you know, describe it other than saying what you did, like in that one in particular, maybe your message box one as well, is you create a function with the same name as your class and put it in that file. And right. that way you don't need to use the include because you're leveraging the fact that it's a function, even though right. there's a class with the same name. But do you in instantiate it or is that what it's called? Is like in that function, you're-, you're You don't have to instantiate it in the function. Okay. But it's kind of a cheating way to do it. It's basically like adding an include because whenever AutoHotKey runs or runs a script, it goes through and it compiles it. And it looks to see, okay, are there any functions in this code? Right. Yes, there's a function. Okay. Let's Is this function it. referenced yeah. anywhere? Right. No, it's not referenced in the code. Right. Okay. Well, let's look in yeah. the it, folder, it, it, the live folder for the program. Is there a function with this, or is there a file with the same name as the function in there? Yes. Oh, okay. This must be what he meant. So it automatically includes right. it. But a class, for whatever reason. Yeah, class doesn't. doesn't. No, no, I just won't. So, no. well, in, and this is what we, you know, after talking to him, I realized it sucks. However, the really bummer part was that it doesn't even report an error. It doesn't tell you. It no, you know, no, it won't. That was the one that, like, drove me nuts of not understanding you know like why is possibly it i think if you put warn uh-huh on it might right yeah but that also drives you nuts because this variable doesn't have a value this i mean there's so many things that right that it warns on it's it's too much yeah, it's ridiculous but yeah for the most part it just won't tell you so classes you kind of got to know what you're doing when you're using classes oh. and, you know, just at least make sure that you have all the right files included because yeah, right. it won't error out, but it won't do what you want, want it to do. No, but, and that's where I just wish more people kind of understood the, what you've done of by defining a function using the class in inside the class. Well, whatever however you want to phrase it, right? I know it's a problem, right. Yeah. But, what I, you can do class the one. same file as the function you put the definition to the class right? right and what you could also do like say there's an instantiated value that you want to give it all of the time like um my fun and then my fun colon equals new fun and then new return this so when you call to fun, 
it'll automatically create the instantiate the instantiated object of my fun in the global space. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could go back to the main code and do global my fun here. And then it's super global so that no matter where it's created or where it is in your code, inside a class, inside a function, whatever, it will be there. Right. So let's go ahead and fun. And then M is object fun. Oh, fun. Oh, fun is an object because fun is the name of the class. My fun, my fun is also an object. So now we can reference that in another function, uh, FF. So now we call to FF and we run it and it's still a function because it's super global here. So it can yeah. be used inside of a, a function Right. Without having right. to say yeah. early scope. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Without having to do it there. Right. As long as you global in the global scope, then it's like, all right, this thing's going to work everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. On any Great point. for certain things. Terrible for others. If you right. reuse variables a lot, right. you're going to be screwed. Right. So just make sure that it's something um, unique enough so yeah. that you're not reusing it. But yeah, it's nice to it's nice to know that you know you've got super global things that you can just no matter where I am, it's just like I don't have to do any extra things. I just reference the variable. Help me understand this though. So inside of a function, uh -huh. I can declare something global there, but that's not a super. It's not super global. No. Now tell me where. So even though I said global and it's inside, the, where would that not be accessible? All right, so we're going to create a global variable called um, stuff. Yeah. All right, stuff colon equals one. Yeah. All right, so FF1, FF1, message box stuff. Mm -hmm. So in order, it's going to come FF here, going to come inside FF global stuff, right. stuff equals one. Right. So we're going to message box stuff here. Get rid of that. So we run it. Stuff equals one. Yeah. Okay. And it is global. But now when we message box it again, in this other function, this, it, this variable space can, is not part of the global. Right. Can, can you add a, a line after line five to do a message box? Yeah, there of stuff. Well, actually, store stuff from uh, we don't return. Oh, actually, yeah, that still should work, right? Is that yeah. going to show there? Sure. So it's the inside of another function is where it, it's global to the parent script, but not inside other functions. Right. Okay. See, this is our second message box. It's yeah. here, All and right. it's fine. Yeah. But uh, inside of here, it's not. Right. So the super global, that's where it would be everywhere. Yep. Cool. So if we do uh, stuff here. Yeah then one, one, and one, right. everything will show up. Right. But we get rid of that super global, it's one, one, and then blank. Right. And where's now, the super you, duper global? <laughs> Sorry. Basically, yeah. So if you just put global in here, now it'll work one, one, and one. Because what this global does is it says, all right, let's take FF1, this function scope, and let's just put it into oh, the global space. Wow. Thank you for pointing that out. I would not have realized that. Yeah, because that's count to me counterintuitive. I, I would I would have bet money that would not have worked, but I get what your point. It now makes the scope available and says, hey, what else is out here at the global level? Right. Yeah. Okay. But you can also say, let's just say we want a global stuff. Or let's say we want a global fun. So we run it, we get one, one, and zero, or in blank, because in the global, in the local yeah, space, yeah. stuff is not I get it. Um, assigned yet. Right. But if you global stuff right. and run it, you get one, one, and one. So what throws me is like, and that's not, 
declaring it and giving it a value. It's just no. it's just uh, allowing it to go outside of the function to get okay. the value. All right. Wow, that's very cool. I did not have that understanding. That's... Yeah, and if you just do global, it's all all variables, all objects, everything. But if you just state, all right, I want stuff, things, and whatever, then it'll only go to the global scope to get right. those things. Right. Cool. Wow. This was a great little mini lesson. Yeah. So, yeah, just, um, and scope is great for, you know, keeping things separate. I reuse variables like for everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I will constantly use like A, B, C, yeah, D, yeah. E, F, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. Because it's just like they're throwaway variables. Sure. Yeah. Well, you're leveraging the fact, right? Like to, it doesn't matter. So, right. It right. Is, as long as you're good, it, it is, you're, you can take advantage of the fact and keep it simple. Mm-hmm. But with functions, you can have all of those A's and B's and Q's, all of that stuff in its own little area, its own little scope, so that whenever you do a message box of A somewhere else, yeah. it's blank. Well, and that was where working with GUIs, you, you, do, you might want to make things global just because, right, that it, um, you want to have access to a lot of stuff that, um, in different places. Oh, you're talking about like variables for for within the GUI? Yeah, right. That you're you know you're creating GUIs and um, you're accessing it from different places, but if right. that thing's not global, then you know. Uh, working right, but all you have to do there that. is, whoops, GUI add edit uh, v something. Um, with 200, oops, show, return, and then we'll add a button, button, uh, G, show, show, I guess I could have just done it that, eh, <laughs> dummy, show, there we go, okay, and we will make this button default, there we go. So when we run this, we got a button that says show, but if we hit enter, since we've defaulted it, it will automatically default to whatever G label you give it. So let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff. And then let's say GUI submit no hide, which will basically it evaluates what is currently within the GUI and it returns all of the variables that you have sent with what should be in them. Okay, so we called that, I forgot already, something, and we run it. Okay, so ASDF, we hit enter, and there's nothing in there, because this scope is outside of right. the global. So, um, ESC, turn, there we go. So there's two ways, to, there's two ways to do this. We could uh, global just something, run it, ASDF, enter. And now something comes in. Or if you if you're doing it everywhere, right? You super global it there, yeah. and then, then it comes right. in. Right. So either which way is fine. Yeah. Or you can just use a class that takes care of all of that stuff for you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that tutorial there, a little walkthrough. Um, again, I was just talking with Mace Rieth about global scope scope you know super global lots of things how they interact with classes um i thought i'd end this with a little quote here i saw i thought it was pretty funny here um don't be afraid to cut people off and that was uh lorena bobbitt so if those of you younger guys you might need to uh google that but um it's a tongue-in-cheek thing anyway hope you guys uh enjoyed that please like share add some comments right if you uh if you learned some things tell me what you learned what else would you like to, to learn about cheers <laughs>